get us going for the day. Um, thanks everyone for coming along today. Um, we are into the second half of the first session, so it's fantastic that you're all here. Thank you again for giving up some time, um, particularly to talk today um, around podcasting. So I guess we all know podcasting. We probably listen to podcasting perhaps on the way in the car or going for a walk or, or on our way to work, something like that. So today we're going to have a look at um, how we might use podcasting in our own um, in our own teaching, how we might create our own podcasts, how we can use other podcasts that have already been created perhaps, and how and why we would go about doing that. So for the majority of us, you know, we've been talking about Zoom, we're in Zoom at the moment, um, so why not just use recordings for our students? Well, podcasts can offer something slightly different for our students. They allow students to be doing something else perhaps um, while they're listening to a podcast, and it also allows them to use different parts of their brain as they're listening to something um, and really taking that in in a different type of format. So we'll go through a bit of an explanation today um, around podcasts, how, what they are, what they're not. Um, we'll take you through some exemplars from how people are currently using them in the subjects and people really are using them in quite different ways. We'll also take you through a bit of a tool walkthrough. So this will be Lachlan's um, main game here of taking us through Anchor FM and also having a look at Panopto. So giving you two different options there of how you might like to use podcasts. Um, we'll also have a bit of a talk through how we might access podcasts, so subscriptions, how we link to them, how we might embed them within to our subject site. So we'll take you through that little bit of a walkthrough as well as thinking about some teaching ideas and, of course, some tips and tricks and uh, Q&A. While we're going through this session, though, I'd really encourage you to start popping things into the chat box around how you might be using podcasts or what you might like to know more about when it comes to podcasts. And Lachlan and myself um, will jump in and everyone else can weigh in as well into that chat room. So I think I'll hand it over to you, Lachlan, and maybe you can take us through those ideas behind what is a podcast? Do tell us, Lachlan, what is a podcast? What isn't a podcast? I don't know that I'm qualified to talk about it um, <laughs> some days because uh, you run into people that um, certainly have very different ideas about uh, what a podcast uh, is or isn't. Um, and so we'll talk about that a little bit as well. But look, the first thing I'm going to do is just chuck a link to uh, a mentee uh, voting portal into the chat pod, which basically is asking all of you what you think a podcast uh, is. So by all means, click on that uh, link and um, have a, a vote quickly so that we can have a look and get an idea about what other people think a podcast is or isn't. Uh, and then I'll unpack that a little bit because um, every week uh, I get a different take on what a podcast is or is not. There you go. So we'll see some of those results coming in as people click on this. But um, I do find it really interesting because in the five years that I've been with CSU, the way that this term is used and the way people are seeking to either have podcasts added to their sites or, or added as a concept for, for why people would want to um, access things like micro-credential courses or, or, you know, topical stuff that we have going at the moment and the term podcast comes up again, referring to something very, very different again. So it is it is really, really interesting and we can see some of the responses coming in here, uh, you know, brief communication, um, doing other things, which certainly is, is um, one of the reasons why a lot of people will choose to access content via a podcast because you can certainly multitask, do other things. At a base level, I'm absolutely on board with um, an audio recording, for example. And um, yeah, it's fascinating, the responses. People are accessing it via mo uh, mobile and um, sharing of ideas, all that kind of stuff. So this is fantastic. Thank you to the 14 of you that have, uh, have jumped in there and populated this so quickly. It, it certainly gives us uh, a good launching platform to get into uh, podcast, what it is and what it isn't. So let's get right into it. Um, I do remember when um, someone asked me about four years ago um, about getting podcasts into their subject. And I said, oh, which, um, which subscription service are you intending to use? And they said, no, no, I just want to make some sound grabs. And I hadn't quite heard the term sound grabs, grabs used in that way. So um, that's why that's in the tagline. But look, basically what most people can agree on is that a podcast refers to the creation of digital audio recordings that are going to be accessible in some way 
the dictionary definition of a podcast refers to the idea of a subscription, a service that people will access on demand, sign up for, uh, and that if there's a number of them together, that they're a part of a series, for example, and they form episodes, and that there's some type of mechanism to distribute that audio content to people. Now, that's the traditional dictionary definition of what a podcast is. But in the interim, it's also basically being used to refer to any type of audio provisioned in any type of way within uh, a subject site. And in fact, it's not simply talking about audio anymore. We've got people that refer to video content in their subjects, for example, as a podcast. Oh, I want to get some podcasts into, you know, for lecture one with some slides. Oh, so some audio with some slides. So a video. But no, it's, uh, it, the term does get used very loosely. Don't be put off by that. I'm certainly not judging. But just uh, this is what most EDs and learning resource officers um, sort of deal, deal with, you know, sort of week in, week out, is that when someone tells them up front they want podcasts in their subject site, it could mean a number of things. So we're going to have a look at, um, at how that is approached. And certainly, if you're using podcasts at all throughout this, um, you don't necessarily have to um, pay too close attention to what I'm talking about. Do share your own experiences in the chat pod as well. Uh, and the rest of the community here might um, comment in, in kind. I've got a few exemplars lined up so we can have a look at, at uh, ways that people are using podcasts in subject sites. So let's have a look at some of those. First up, I'm going to show you within an I2 site, someone has used the, the audio tool within Blackboard to add a file. So an MP3 recording that has been recorded. However, it could have been done through a phone, through your microphone, um, recorded in some way, downloaded somewhere, an MP3 file that gets uploaded into Blackboard. Blackboard then puts this skin around it, an audio player. And then at that point, people can click on play. This information is brought to you by Charles. We'll end up getting that playing within the site. So it's interactive at the extent that, that someone sees that play icon and starts playing things. Potentially, there might be some sort of instruction or, or blurb around it before. But the intention is that the audio file is played at a particular point within the delivery of the subject. OK, so this isn't on a podcasting platform. There's no distribu distribution sort of mechanism. It doesn't seem to be part of a series. So it's breaking all of those definitions kind of aspects that we've provided earlier, but it's still called a podcast, right? So we've got an audio file and students are able to download that, for example. And getting audio content into subject sites like this is, is probably the simplest way um, of just uploading and attaching audio into the Blackboard content editor. And you'll see that when you build items yourself inside i2, you hit uh, build content and just down here is audio. And at that point, once you click on that, it's gonna ask you to upload, find the file and the end result after you've browsed for it is that it will embed that player within the subject site. So before we look at third party tools for podcasting, I just wanna point out that that is the easiest way to get audio into your subject site if you've already got the file somehow. All right, there's our first one. Let's look at some others. Right, so within this subject, we've got uh, an audio file which has been recorded using the SoundCloud platform, which you might be familiar with. And SoundCloud uh, will end up giving you uh, a file that's hosted on the web. And in this case, the staff members worked with uh, a member of, of the DLT, for example, to get that file embedded uh, within this sort of container. So it's visually fairly appealing and engaging and people presumably will click on the play button. Hi all, Julia Lindsay here. And off it plays. Now I want to point out before I go any further down that path that SoundCloud is a paid service and that this is problematic in that if that staff member uh, no longer subscribes or the university doesn't have an enterprise license for the platform, uh, et cetera, then that file's not going to work. And all of that work that's gone into preparing this to look so appealing is, is gone, essentially. 
So we're not going to look at, at other paid platforms today, but I, I just thought I'd point out SoundCloud because it is one of the more uh, well-known tools for recording and hosting audio files. Okay, so that's an embedded podcast from a third-party tool. We've got some more. Kim Bailey, who I believe is probably joining us this morning, is also a prolific podcaster in recent times. And um, we're going to talk about the way that she uses Anchor FM. Uh, and I do recommend that you reach out and talk to her if, um, if you find either Prue or myself too intimidating in this regard, because she's easily more approachable. So we'll, um, we'll look at the way that, um, that Kim uses Anchor, which is, a, again, a third-party tool. If you go to anchor.fm, it's free to sign up to, and it will give you your own channel, your own platform to create episodes, podcast episodes, and then allow you to get them easily back into your subject site. So I've got an account here with uh, a number of, of episodes in there, but when I sign in, it, it will give you a summary, for example, of, of when they're accessed. We're going to look more at Anchor in detail as we get into this session, but I just want to point out that within the subject site, for example, a number of academics here, we've got another law academic, Hayley McEwen, for example, who has used Anchor to create a series about a particular topic. And she's recorded podcast episodes in there uh, about legal concepts. And the students ultimately will access these through the subject site. And we'll see how they look when they're embedded. But basically, there's a series. The students are able to subscribe to those using a number of different uh, tools and apps. And um, the end result is that they're either going to a website like this where they get the whole channel or within a subject site where if we can find some embedded, I know that there are some in announcements even, I think, for this. So we might pull up one of those. Actually, it's here. Let's see. going to make a liar out of me here, Kim. Oh, there we go. Okay. So here is um, an Anchor FM audio file that has been embedded straight into an announcement to the students. So the subject template that uh, the announcement template that everyone has access to now has been used. And within that template, Kim has in fact taken uh, the Anchor FM um, audio file that she's recorded and embedded it. They don't need to log in at all. It just plays straight away. It doesn't matter who they are, but they would have logged into the i2 site to get access to it. Hello, too. everyone. This is just a very short podcast with some frequently asked questions. That okay, so you can see there that in that case, the audio file, really this is a hyperlink, a very pretty image of a hyperlink, but it's it's a hyperlink which will open the audio file um, from elsewhere. And we're getting some good questions coming through from Kirsten here about putting podcasts like this embedded within announcements. So I'll point out whilst we're looking at that, that the shortfall here is that this will look and play like this from within I2. But when the email comes through, the students do not see this container. And for that reason, uh, as Kim will tell us here, she basically started just providing the hyperlink to the episode in Anchor rather than the whole container. Yeah, sorry, sad face. It's, um, that's, that's a shortfall with, um, you know, uh, embedded objects within announcements. So yeah, it looks good within the i2 site, but when you open the email, you get the template obviously for the announcement, but embedded objects won't play. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Here we have a Padlet wall, which, um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And in this case, what's happened is the academic has used the Padlet wall to drop in the link to their podcast. So this is still within the subject site. There's a Padlet wall created for question and answers. They've made a podcast using Anchor, which we're going to do ourselves in a moment. And they have just dropped it onto the Padlet wall. And by doing so, there's the podcast. Hello, welcome. This is a short podcast in relation to topic seven. So there you go. You can see that Kim has at that point embedded podcasts, again, all from the same place, from her Anchor FM channel. 
And there are multiple ways that that is then provided to students within the subject site. Okay, so we, we basically got a difference between uploading audio ourselves directly into the subject site, where it ends up sitting inside, for example, topics in a container to play that file. And here's another example of what that looks like. That's the audio file uploaded to the subject site inside a container to make the content look a bit shiny. But that file has been uploaded into the subject site. Now I'm gonna point out that this is problematic in light of the university's current issues with caps, data caps. I'm not sure if you've, you've heard people talking about this, that within our subject sites, we have a storage limit and we can't just keep uploading videos and audio files into our subject sites indefinitely because we end up going over those caps. So uploading audio like this um, can be problematic if there are hundreds of them, for example. Audio files by themselves are quite small, but uploading lots and lots of them, predominantly video is the issue, but audio contributes to this, is not ideal. It's really uh, what we're suggesting here is that if you can find a tool like Anchor FM to create your audio and host it, you can just keep linking to it within the subject site and use it indefinitely. This doesn't have to be reproduced or rolled over session after session into a new subject site. It can all be hosted on your own channel, for example. And here's Kim's channel that we were looking at some of those podcasts that had been dropped into uh, Padlet or announcements or the subject site. All of them live here. So you can see she's created a whole heap of them. It's obviously, if you look at the times that are against each of those, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, short, concise, arguably very easy to produce. And maybe we'll get Kim to chime in on that uh, shortly. But you can see that it's another way of provisioning content to the students quickly and easily. And visually, it's quite engaging as well. But these are ready for her to use the next time the subject's delivered. None of it is contingent on what's happening in the subject site. So um, I think at that point, I might start unpacking the tool Anchor FM unless uh, we might stop for a moment, Prue, and see uh, what sort of questions, feedback, comments, any of the above. Yeah, thanks, Lachlan. I think there's, there's a good question from Greg who just wants to know a little bit more about the caps that you were just mentioning, um, what they are, when they'll be imposed. Absolutely. Look, I think... Um, DIT, DLT and the, and the sort of faculty leadership, et cetera, are still um, trying to determine the best strategy for getting this under control. But essentially, we each subject site is not going to be able to have more than one gigabyte in total of storage used within that subject site. And that might sound like a lot or not, a, not that much, depending on uh, who you are. But essentially, we've been using Blackboard for... Um, you know, five years, a bit longer. And in that period of time, we've accumulated within our subject sites for a whole variety of reasons and excess of storage that simply is not part of our, um, you know, our, 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 our arrangement with the vendor. So whilst we use this product, we can't just keep indefinitely adding more and more and more and more content on top of it. We have to actually find um, ways of keeping that under control. And it's, it's predominantly to do with um, the way that we copy over subject sites. That needs to be looked at session after session after session, provisioning them, and also particularly video um, and uploading video files directly into subject sites. So Zoom gives us some options. Panopto and CSU Replay gives us some options because that content is hosted externally. So that part is good but we still have a lot of subject sites that have an excess of, um, have exceeded that cap. And um, it's basically got to be brought back under the one gigabyte limit very, very quickly. So I would expect to hear more about that um, arguably by session 60, but um, that will be coming out through, obviously through your own um, faculty communications about um, strategies for getting that under control. Um, Prue, anything else? 
Um, we've just had a, a really good question from Matilda, and this is more around whether or not we can just um, start putting all our content into an I2 Interact2 organisational site and just link our students to there. So then there's no need to keep rolling over content every year. We can just keep flagging students and linking them through to the org site. What are your thoughts on that, Lachlan? I've done this in the past, but I'd be interested to hear your comments as well. Yeah, it's like a, a, a hybrid between the, the ideal way of having a single master site that is, uh, you know, has your, your up-to-date content in it and you don't have to keep reprovisioning it, updating it, potentially compounding the amount of files and storage in there. Um, and the idea that maybe we put certain types of content in other places as well. So it's... Um, Look, it's, a, it's certainly possible. It's in a way, it's what we're doing by hosting our multimedia content somewhere else, whether it's an org site or somewhere else. But, but really, until we get to the point with our new learning management system that we will end up moving towards over the next year, two years, for example, we have to get in a position where we're using single subject sites and not constantly reprovisioning subject sites again and again and again and again. That's where the, the problem really is. It's the way that we you know, we, we provision subject sites. Okay, I think it's time we probably get into Anchor a little bit so that people can see what we're talking about and how easy it is to use. So um, I think, Pru, have you been dropping in probably the, the cheat sheet for podcasting along the way in there on, on Anchor? But anchor.fm is the address, the website that I'm going to. It's free to sign up with. You can use a Google account, a new account just from an email, a Facebook account. You can sign up to this tool very, very easily. But what I'm looking at is that when we actually create our Anchor channel, it gives us the ability to create new episodes. That's the language we're using here for each recording is an episode. And at that point where it brings up this very, very simple to use interface, that will allow us to either record directly within the tool, which we'll do in a sec, or to upload our own audio that maybe you've recorded in your phone or elsewhere, and you can record it directly into this platform. Okay, so at the end of it, we're gonna get a collection of, of audio files and other bits and pieces, transitions, other, other things that we might want in our recording over here on the right, but let's build an episode. So if I said, okay, record, it's going to ask me which microphone I want to use. Okay, I'll end up using my headset. Okay, start recording. Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, this podcast recording where we're going to briefly look at blah, 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 blah. Stop recording. It's now uploading that audio file into uh, my library. And then it's a drag and drop exercise of taking that file and adding it to my. Um, episode continuum, if you will. You can either drag them or you can hit the plus sign. You can play it here and listen to it again if you need to. Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, this podcast. All right, so that's already recorded. If I hit plus, it adds it into my episode, ready to go. And maybe for you, it's a matter of recording small pieces. Some people like to script things quite heavily and record small fragments so that it's all concise and perfect. Other people are a bit more loosey-goosey. This is completely up to you. All right, so you, you basically can either record a single audio track or as many as you like and drag it across into your episode uh, continuum. At the moment, you can see that my, my episode is seven seconds in length, so it's massive. I could do that as many times as I wanted. And then as long as I dragged them all over here and ordered them the way that I want, and that's done using these little handlebars that are over here on the left. I think what I might like with my podcast maybe is a bit of a musical interlude because I've heard that done elsewhere. So there's a button over here on the left that says transitions. If I click on that, it gives me access to a fairly massive library of little sounds. Fair enough. 
you might consider these gimmicky and not you, or perhaps you love them and want to have them every five seconds in your recording. Again, it's completely up to you. But if you want to add one to your episodes, all you have to do is either drag and drop it or hit the plus sign. For me, I want to have that at the beginning of my recording, so I'll drag it up there. Okay, so it's not set up, um, Sky, that's a good question. It's We don't have an enterprise license for Anchor. It's an individual use um, tool at this stage, privately sign up for free, and then you can embed your episodes within um, your subject sites. That's the way it's accessed currently. Uh, and um, I don't have uh, uh, any other information from the institution at this stage about accessing one in the near term, but I do know that it's completely um, free and easy to sign up for individually to then use that content where you need to. All right, so I've got my uh, transition sound at the beginning here, and I've got the audio of me talking there. I think my episode's ready to go. I can give it a preview down the bottom. Hi everyone and welcome to uh, this podcast record. Okay, so my audio recording is good to go. I hit save, then it's gonna ask for a bit of information. Test podcast recording. A description, for example, this is only going to be read by people that come to the anchor site to look at the episode, keep that in mind. And when do I wanna publish it? I wanna publish it now. You can put in some other optional information in there if you wanted it to be part of a particular season of recordings, give it the episode a number if, you, if you'd like to. This is really more for people that are starting to make collections of audio recordings. You also can upload uh, an image um, that will sit as a thumbnail next to your podcast uh, when you embed it. But when you're ready, hit publish. And it's been, it's been published, okay? So it's ready to go. I'm gonna close this for a second. So my podcast recording, there's the information about it. No one's listened to it yet. There's been zero plays. And I'm able to get information about sharing that recording from here. I can either get a hyperlink, at which point it's copied it to my clipboard. I could then drop it into wherever I need to. So for example, I could drop it into the chat pod there and people could start listening to it straight away. Consider that it does need time to publish online. So if you click on that and it doesn't start playing straight away, uh, it just needs usually a minute or two. I may have jumped the shark a little bit by giving you that link if it stopped playing straight away, but it usually takes a minute or two to finalize online. And the other option for sharing that I'm really interested in is this embed button over here in the bottom right-hand corner. It's copied the embed code, which means that I can go into a subject site anywhere. We'll just jump into one here, for example. Promise not to uh, damage anything permanently, Kim. And let's find one, maybe in the turn it in section. We'll just do it there for a sec and then I'll delete it. If I turn on edit mode, and build a new content item. We'll just wait for the page to catch up. Podcast going in here. At that point, clicking into the body of the content editor, I can then choose the code button over here, the source code, and Control V will paste in that embed code that we got from Anchor. Hit save, and it's done. It's ready, it's sitting there within my subject site inside its own player with my thumbnail sitting behind it. If I hit submit, this is now available and accessible within the subject site. It'll go right down the bottom as the newest content item. There it is. There's the podcast. Right, so I've managed in a very, very short period of time to record. The recording is saved in the cloud as part of my collection of episodes and embed that content directly back into my subject site really within minutes. Um, Kim, how would you feel about talking about your own experiences using Anchor uh, if I put you in the spotlight for a moment? Uh, sure, Lachlan. Um, I, I guess if I can use it, anyone can use it. 
because I have a habit of breaking technology. <laughs> it's really simple. And um, I, I guess I'd encourage you to have a bit of a play around with it, see if it works for you. But it's um, really convenient because unlike where you have to record yourself if you're doing a video recording with slides and, and visuals and being much more scripted, you can just do very quick, brief uh, sound grabs, I suppose, that interpose where the students are up to. So. I've used it in this subject particularly because the students um, are finding the assessment regime quite new and challenging. And so I'm trying to deal with their frequently asked questions that are coming through our study groups um, that they're working in all in one hit and just a five minute grab of, okay, you're all asking me these questions, here's the answers, or here's where you need to go to find the answers and the resources that can assist you. Um, and that's been a really effective form of communication um, in that subject site. So the other good thing is that it, when you've got your account, which doesn't cost anything, you can actually see how many plays you've got on your account in your information. Um, so that's often interesting as well as to whether anybody's actually listening to what you're telling them. And yeah, that can be helpful too for your analytics. That's great. And, and you've been obviously more prolific in this space um, over this session, definitely. Um, and you, have you got a preferred way of providing this to students, Kim? Like I saw you used it in Padlet. I know you've given them, you've tried putting it in announcements. What's your preferred way of getting them out? Yeah, so I'm using them in a different, a variety of different ways. Um, the sound grabs, as I indicated, but the feedback I've had from students uh, who recently attended residential school is that they're loving the podcasts in terms of as a substitute for lectures. I used to record lectures with slides as a video file in Panopto and put, embed those in the subject site. But the feedback I'm getting is, well, look, we do so much looking and reading and face-to-face <clears throat> -face with the computer all the time. We love the fact we can actually listen to it at the gym or in the car or on the bus. Um, so <clears throat> thinking about how you can mix it up for the students, I think, is really helpful. So I'm embedding podcast lectures that are just concept lectures, key concepts, trying to pull together the key things they need to get this week from their readings. Um, and how we might apply that particularly to our assessment. Um, no more than 30 minutes tops. So I'm not regurgitating content. I'm just pulling it all together for them. And I've found that's been really effective. They like that. Um, so yeah, that's been really helpful as well as the frequently asked questions. That's great. And I can see here actually the times against either your topics, you know, as you said, which are kind of going up towards 30 minutes, but usually sort of less than that. And then your small, smaller kind of grabs that you're providing that are obviously quite targeted. Um, you found those, how, how long would you say it, it takes you to make one of these? If it goes for five minutes, are you spending a long time getting that five minutes uh, done and out to the students? Or is it something that you kind of knock off fairly quickly and then just get it out there? Yeah, no, I think it's um, it's incredibly quick. It depends what you're doing. If it's a concept lecture, then I'm going to map that out in a document before I actually speak it because I need to know that where I'm going is logical. Um, but also, too, in terms of longevity, you know, if for any reason um, Anchor's no longer available to me and I need to recreate the material in another platform, I like to actually have some written documents of where I went in that lecture. Uh, but when it comes to those five minute grabs, then that's just a moment in time. So that takes no time at all. I can literally do that off the top of my head. It takes me eight minutes tops. Well, thanks for sharing, uh, Kim. I think you've made a really important point there about subscription and a great segue for me to talk about that with Anchor for a second. Um, and there are two things I want to point out here. In the event that students have got the link to someone's Anchor channel like this and they can see the whole collection, at that point, the user is able to come in here and click on any of these third party uh, apps or tools to listen to the podcast. So if they're using Spotify, they can get access to it there. If they were using any of these other tools like Pocket Cast, which I'll bring up in a bit, uh, or Google Podcasts, they could come in here, click on any of those and get it added to whichever platform they use for subscribing to podcasts. The alternative is that you need to actually provide um, a subscribe link to your channel and so that this has actually given me an excellent opportunity to point out where you find that in your own uh, anchor account so this is uh, my account and apart from my you know dashboard which will give me a summary of all of my episodes and how many plays etc um there are it also gives me sort of some graphs on when access is happening and the most number of views, etc. which episodes are the most popular. So if you're looking for some analytics over which uh, audio people prefer, 
it also will use uh, aspects of Google Analytics, for example, to uh, location track where the listeners are coming from, if you're interested in that stuff. But what I want to point out is that under your settings area up in the top right hand corner, there is an area called distribution. If you click on that, the first thing it will give you is your RSS feed. So the link that you need to provide to students to say, if you want to subscribe to my podcast channel, here it is. You just get the one channel on the um, on the free version, Kirsten, and you put everything into that channel. Yeah, I think if you were going to use separate channels at that point, you'd need to be using separate email addresses to sign up for it. But um, uh, by and large, it gives you the one channel. You, you could organize the content into different series, for example, and separate it that way. But um, yeah, it doesn't provide a number of channels for you to use with um, with that. Anchors are owned by Spotify, by the way. So I'm not sure if uh, I mentioned that before, but um, I think that's a fairly re recent acquisition. Anchor was bought by Spotify. And that's why when people um, get those episodes, for example, the, one of the first things you see against those episodes um, when we start playing them is, is uh, a Spotify icon, play on Spotify. That just occurred to me. So it must've been a fairly recent thing that um, th that acquisition. Okay, so look, we've looked briefly at Anchor and how easy that is to use to create audio content. We also talked about um, Panopto and CSU Replay. And I did see that um, a number of people also talked about using Audacity to create audio content in the chat pod as well. Whatever platform you are most comfortable with creating audio, I, I absolutely encourage you to use that. These tools, I guess, we're focusing more on how you get that content back into the subject sites. Um, and that's why we looked at uploading those files directly into uh, the, the using the Blackboard Audio tool uh, and also using these other cloud-based platforms to host your content for you. So since we're talking about Panopto, I think it's worth actually opening up and creating an audio file in Panopto in exactly the same way. So I'm going to jump into an org site for a second. Um, while I'm opening this up, Prue, um, have uh, we got any more comments, feedback, questions, anything along those lines? Yeah, this has been a really sort of interesting discussion. So some things around um, uploading external files into or, or already created audio files um, into Anchor FM, perhaps from other types of um, MP, uh, podcasting sites like Audacity, perhaps. So I think um, from memory, Anchor FM does allow for you to upload a, quite a wide range of different types of um, files, um, audio yeah. files. Mm. Yeah, um, and there's a really good question from Maggie just around things like, um, is it possible to customise your URL in Anchor FM so that it doesn't perhaps have your name or you could change it to something that's more in keeping with your subject or your, your um, discipline content? Yeah, look, I'd, I'd have to have a deeper look at it, to be honest. I, I certainly wasn't looking at yep. the specific URLs yep. it's provided, but um, it, it brings up the, the name of the channel. I guess that's the thing. So when you create it and sign up in the first instance, you need to make sure that the actual channel that you want to set up is named uh, in a way that you'd be okay with that being in the URL. So it's, yeah, that's where it's pulling that from with the URLs. It's got to do with the, the name that you set up for your channel when you create it in the first instance. It's a really good question though. Um, okay. So look, I'm in CSU replay, um, which I'm sure, um, most of you, all of you are familiar with for creating video. Uh, I want to open the recorder. So I'm going to create um, a new uh, Panopto recording. But this time around, I want to look specifically at using this application for audio, not for video. Because it's certainly possible. And in the event that you want to use some of Panopto's other features, like the fact that we can open it in an editor, after we've made the file and make crops, cut out bits and pieces. Um, we just have to wait for it to wake up, obviously, and launch. Panopto is very slow. Okay. Here's the recording interface for Panopto. And when we go in here with the intention of making an audio file, we just need to make sure that our sources are correct. So I'm not going to use any video. I'm using audio from my headset, that's correct. And I can see the sounds going up and down when I'm talking, so that's working. 
I'm not worried about computer audio at this point. And the, the quality aspect is, is really referring to video capture. So don't get too um, hung up on, on which setting that's for, um, as long as it's not um, arguably at, uh, I think any of those settings would be fine. The file size at the end of the recording is what's impacted by the quality setting. So if you want the smallest possible audio size, change this to standard. And do I want it to capture any secondary sources? Actually, no. I don't want it recording my screens. I don't want it capturing PowerPoint. All I want is this audio. That's it. At that point, I hit record. It's now recording. You can see the timer up the top there. It's going to end up giving me an audio file at the end once it's finished producing this. So I hit stop. Recording is complete. I can either trash it or let's say that it's done. It's now going to tell me that it's uploading it to the server up the top there, what it's doing. And I'd say that's going to happen very, very quickly. But the way that we check in our CSU replay folder, what we just made will appear at the top once it's uploaded. Here it comes. You can see that it's processing. It's 11 seconds long. There's no thumbnail because we weren't capturing any video sources, but I can play it already. So let's see what's going on there. Still puts the disclaimer on, still treating it as a video. However, it's now recording. You can see the timer up the top there. It's going to end up giving me an audio file at the end. Okay, so I've got an audio file there that people can play back and download. I'm also able to then click on the editor from Panopto and then edit this recording, chop it up if I wanted to. There's my continuum underneath and you can start cropping that using the scissors uh, as you would normally do with a video. So we can still do that in exactly the same way. And on top of that, if I open up a content area, if I was, let me just wait for this to load. More podcasts, okay. At this point, if I wanted to add in my podcast that I'd created in here, I can click on this plus icon that's over in the content editor. And I am able to choose Panopto video. We've recorded it using Panopto. So I can go in here and choose from my entire recording collection of Panopto videos. And there it is, top of the list, the one that I've just made, there's my audio file. And I can insert that. And it will now be embedded within my content. And the end result, once it finished loading. So we're getting it in a video container here. So, you know, you could, there are ways to resize this to make it smaller, but essentially your audio that you've made can also be captured using CSU replay and embedded within the subject site that way. Personally, I would say this is not as, as visually appealing or engaging. It's taking up a bunch of real estate, but it means that I can edit the audio it means that the students can download the audio file. Maybe that's a problem for you if you don't want them downloading it and getting a local copy. Um, I would point out though, that if they're listening to it and playing it, there are a million ways to get that audio file if they wanted it. It's, um, um, okay, so it's a really good point that Nick's raised just there. So let's talk about that for a second, the title. When we make anything in Panopto, uh, video recordings, the name of the file, um, by default will be a timestamp. We can absolutely change that. And um, uh, you would do that in CSU replay. So if we go back into our collection, when you make the recording uh, and you get that, that message about it being finalized, you can change the title there, or you can go back and change it later. So there it is, there's the title. At this point, I can go to the settings for that recording. And there's the name. Edit.
next question about titles, I'll give it a new title, save that. And if we go back now to where the content was embedded, if I can remember where I did it, down the bottom. And you'll see that the title has been updated. Okay, so as long as you change it within your CSU replay library, um, it will be reflected wherever that file happens to be embedded. Okay, so it's it's it is important to point out that you know we have options, um, many many options, more appearing by the day for how we can collect, collate audio, curate it, where it's going to be stored, the libraries, the naming, how it's provisioned to students, um, and what we've obviously looked at today is is one way to do that that's quite easy to use with anchor but there are many and people will have their favorites absolutely um, i think what i'll bring up at this stage within our slide deck there's certainly some points about um, how we use it in teaching and i know that there's been other conversation going on in the chat pod so now it's probably a good time prue to address some of this stuff yeah, absolutely. There's there's still quite a few questions coming in, but and Matilda and I are just having a nice conversation around. Um, I threw out the question, trying to do a bit of crowdsourcing around what types of technology people are using. So we're slightly on a, a different track, but just talking around. Um, while you're talking about the technology and the setup of how we can have podcasts, so how can we also have really good sound quality, um, and those types of things? So Matilda's definitely giving the big thumbs up for her Astro's headset, which is nice to see. Um, and I was just about to say that Lachlan's got a really good sound quality on his headset as well, which is a very nice um, and quite affordable Sennheiser um, headset as well. But it really does make the difference. So although we're on a slightly different tangent, Lachlan, it's still very much in keeping with talking about podcasts. That's a fun topic, though. I mean, it's um, obviously over the last kind of 12 to 18 months, the question of, of accessing this stuff and getting our own kind of hardware for homes and things became very topical. And um, everyone's got obviously, um, you know, different needs and things. People that, that either have a gamer in the house or a gamer themselves, for example, would um, arguably be all over this space and, and looking at, at gaming headsets, but they do get pretty expensive. Um, and, um, and also I found for, for my liking, I guess they're also pretty bulky at times. They get right up there covering the whole ears and, and things. So yes, you get quality, but arguably there's some trade-off for encumbrance, I guess, is, is one way of looking at it. Um, I guess in, in, a, in an office setting for that, like I bring mine to work with me, obviously. Um, I ended up going with, um, with a Sennheiser PC8 which uh, I got from Officeworks. I'll just put the details in the chat pod. And that cost, I feel like it was about 60 or $70. Um, they had to send away for it, but you can get it from their website from officeworks.com. Um, and it had a much superior uh, sound quality I found for the price tag compared to its other competitors. So Logitech headsets and, and other cheaper ones as well. You can get a headset for 30 or $40. Um, but I found that that for a slightly bigger spend, uh, and it's also tiny, incredibly light, sits on your ears and, and it's quite easy to use. So yeah, anyway, I could talk about that all day long. Um, we have been looking obviously at a whole bunch of teaching ideas for how people want to use audio, uh, not specifically just podcasts that are distributed or subscribed to, but also just getting audio into your subject sites. We have a few suggestions here, obviously. Uh, you're gonna have more of your own, I'm sure, but um, happy to, to basically um, let anyone take the floor that would like to talk about how they've been using audio or how they would like to use audio uh, in this meeting. Um, by all means, uh, chime in if you've got anything to add at all, where, where all is. If not, Pru, I might hand over the tips and tricks section to you to talk about for a second. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's still a little bit of um, communication going on in the chat box, but hopefully you can see that there's lots of things we can do um, when it comes to having a podcast. And it doesn't just have to be the nuts and bolts um, of a subject. There's ways that we can have fun or creativity with our, our podcasts as well. 
Um, and I think Pete, Peter Mills had some really good questions just around, well, is this introducing another type of technology that maybe will be a little bit too overwhelming um, for students? And I think I'll probably just say that although Lachlan and I talk about different types of technology all the time and how you might like to use them, I think Peter brings up some really good points around, well, let's have a think about what we're using in the subject and what would best suit our students. We know our students quite well, what would best suit them? Perhaps this is better suited to a different subject or, or something like that. So really just thinking around um, how and why we might be using a podcast. Um, but when it comes to tips and, and uh, are we up to tips and tricks? Um, just have a, a think about pacing. And I say that now as I'm slowing down, realising that I've been talking too quickly as well. Um, have a listen to yourself. Go and record yourself first. Listen back to what you sound like. Um, you may find that you're speaking far too quickly, uh, far too slow, um, and just, just take your time. Um, when you're creating that podcast. I think the point around authenticity is a really important one. Um, have a think about um, how authentic you can be in the recording. Do you fumble over words like I do all the time? That's absolutely fine. It brings that human element to what you're doing. Um, try not to, to edit or over edit the podcasting perhaps too much. Just think about how authentic it could possibly be and, and, and how you can still come across as a human um, in that sort of non-visual way. Um, a good point here is not to get lost in transition. So I would probably liken this to when we first started to use PowerPoint all those years ago and we found out that you could do transitions in PowerPoint and then we found out that you could also have sounds and all sorts of flashy swirly colours, uh, bullets, oh, bullet points, just like we've got on our screen here, absolutely. So when it comes to podcasting, although we've got access to all these great sound bites or um, different types of transition noises, just have a think about how, how much they're really needed within a podcast. How long is your podcast? How many would you like to have? Do you really need them? And I think, again, going back to some of our favourite podcasts, so we probably all listen to podcasts. Have a listen to some of your favourite podcasts and think about, well, what is it that you like about them? What makes it easy to listen to? Is it that they're having a conversation and you're joining in, sort of listening on the periphery? Or is it that they're, they're using a whole lot of transitions or, or they have a whole lot of um, external people coming in that you can listen to? So have a think about what they do and, and see if that would work within your discipline as well. Um, we sort of went over this tip around having sort of that RSS feed um, that students can, can sign up to. Um, just figure out what is, what's okay for students, and Lachlan went through a little bit of this, what's okay for them to subscribe to, um, organising your, your um your recordings appropriately as part of that. So would you like to just keep these as something that's embedded in your I2 site? Um, or is this something that you'd really like to have as an, uh, students can access via um, Anchor FM or Audacity or, or something like that? So again, we're giving you lots of options, talking about lots of ways you can do this, but it really comes down to what you are comfortable with and what you think your students would like. So is it that you just want to test the waters and do this as simply as possible? Absolutely. Is this something that you've been really wanting to get into for a long time? Are you ready to get the technology? Do you actually want to go and get perhaps a license for Audacity instead and really work on how you can edit and, and customise and make those professional podcasts? Then maybe that's a slightly different place you'd like to go. Um, make sure you also let students know about your podcasts and, and where they can access them and how often they'll be expecting them or how they fit into the subject. So rather than having them as something separate again, weave them into that narrative of your story, perhaps each week or, or at the very beginning of your subject, let them know in your welcome announcement that, hey, they might like to subscribe or, or um, get updates from your podcast here. So make sure that there's a reason and a purpose for students to, to be going into the podcast and connecting it with your subject content. And I think Kim Bailey has some really good examples around how she really has woven it into that story of her subject um, each week. Is there anything that I've missed there, Lachlan, or anyone else that's out there who'd like to chime in on their sort of tips and tricks for podcasting? I think I'll just add quickly uh, that point about authenticity as well and, and, and register. It's, it's really interesting when you create any type of um, sort of learning object like this, media learning object, what happens to the brain at that point and how self-conscious we get. And certainly I can um, remember working with people with screencasts and things like that for the first time and, and, and just how, um, how many times they wanted to re-record and delete and re-record and, and how self-conscious uh, a lot of people are. Podcasting I found um, or audio recording in general takes it down a notch in terms of, of, that kind of stress and pressure about it being, you know, seen as, as 
Well, I'm not saying not professional. I, I guess what I'm saying is that, that there isn't so much focus on, obviously, um, you know, your image, what you're wearing, where you're seated, what's behind you, you know, the what your your house looks like or, or wherever it is that you're making this, this object. And also that you're going to get different registers, different personas almost, maybe for different purposes creeping in as well. So I think before we see, saw that Kim had was preparing concept lectures that were lengthier and that she was following, if not a script, certainly points to guide and, and keep her on track with what she was following. And I would guess that they're arguably put together with, with a slightly more um, formal register in terms of how it's being covered compared to maybe that three minute update on, you know, assessment three frequently asked questions or giving people just that, you know, um, weekly catch up, for example. So you may find that, that that creeps in a little bit with your recordings, depending on their purpose, that there's a switch with uh, the type of register that you use. I think the other thing as well that I just want to mention is I've just jumped in with my phone. I'm just going to show you uh, a podcasting um, aggregation tool, so an app that people will use to subscribe to different types of podcasts. And the one I'm going to show in here is called um, Pocket Casts, and this is uh, a particularly um, popular podcasting tool at the moment. Just wait for that to come up. So that's on my phone. Hang on, we'll get back to the screen. Okay, and Pocket Casts is a free app. And as long as you know the title of the podcast that you want to subscribe to, and it's been put online, people can subscribe to those. And I want to point out that this tool particularly is, is valuable for you as well in that if you're listening to a bunch of other podcasts that people have put together, have a listen to the way that they put those episodes together think about the production and the time and how long because usually they're going to be going for half an hour or an hour etc everyone's got lots of different interest areas but I listen to podcasts uh, half the time I'm listening to them because I want to hear how people put them together so are they using a whole bunch of, of sort of gimmicky transitions and other things going on what's their register like is it incredibly formal or is it intentionally informal you know so building that kind of casual rapport in a way so apart from me just being interested in, in, in listening to different types of podcasts, um, I also do it obviously for a, a work-related purpose because I want to hear uh, really the what's going through people's minds as they're trying to put together their own episodes. And these are, these are you know, professional paid uh, individuals that make these as opposed to um, us that we're doing it um, within our, our educator, you know, uh, capacity but um, I'm not going to spend hours and hours putting together a 30-minute recording. So it's, it's a good device to use um, just to inform yourself about what might be too much because there, you can also certainly go over the top with that. So, yeah, this program is called Pocket Cast, this app, and um, it absolutely will um, let you subscribe to podcasts yourself. It's free. And then you um, can then, uh, you know, uh, you know, so listen to any of those episodes uh, yourself with whatever you're doing and consume it in the same way that a lot of students would be, for example. Okay, I'll stop sharing that for a moment, hand over to Prue, and then we might wrap things up. Yeah, thanks, Lachlan. So I think, um, again, we've had a bit of a discussion just around the logistics um, in the chat box there, around the logistics of interviewing people. And I think I would probably highly recommend Zoom if it's if you can't be in person with the person. Zoom is a really great great way of creating your, your um, podcast. You get to see the person that you're talking to, but then afterwards, after you've recorded, you can just download that MP3 file, the audio file, um, and upload that to Anchor FM. So I think it's a nice, easy way to do that. And the sound quality, again, um, is usually quite good with your headset um, and different different things like that. Otherwise, in person, of course, you might like to go and get, I think I, I did recommend um, the Blue Yeti Nano. It's one of my favourite um, desktop microphones or just the Blue Yeti in general, but that's a bit of a bigger um, purchase that you might like to make. But that does allow for, I think they call it, is it the omnidirectional recording? So you can have one person in front of the microphone and a person behind it, and it will pick up that sound um, equally. 
across the room. So there's a few different things to get used to, but uh, I think Lachlan's really shown how accessible podcasting is and really just jumping in there and having a go, having a listen to yourself, trialing a few different types of things um, before you unleash your podcast onto the students perhaps. So I think that's it, Lachlan. We made it to 11 o'clock. We've gone a little bit over, but I think there's a lot here to think about, but we'd really encourage you to have a go at podcasts, um, see what you can create and, and what your students think of them as well. Um, is there anything you'd add there, Lachlan? No, I think I've done my dash. Um, I'm happy to hang around and answer any questions or chat to people about their own individual um, use cases. But um, thank you all for joining us for another Tuesday session. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at next week's, which we'll be looking at some new tools and tricks uh, with uh, Wakely, Feedly and ThingLink as three different content creation tools to play around with. So have a great week, everybody, and, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.